Let's talk about that shiny box. Yeah, the one that's just running there behind me. Yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, so yeah, in the box. Kingdom Come set. Good idea. It's on my list. Answer that one. Done. Moving on to Dark Knight Metal. Metal. All right. So one of the coolest things about Dark Knight Metal that uh, some people have seen on our forums and stuff like that. These are uh, template cards. I want to be uh, point out. These aren't the final art. The final. Uh, text on these cards, but it gives you an idea of how they're going to look. There's a new subset called Metal, which is basically like a suit amongst suits that uh, moves across the hero, villain, and equipment lines right there, and I'm going to show you some in a second, uh, that also have a foil treatment on them. So they look pretty, but they also, every Metal card has that foil treatment on them, and they're the only ones with the foil treatment, so it actually helps them stand out on the, on the table, but this is kind of the look that those cards have. Uh, trying to give you a little bit of light reflection on them, but there's a lot of really cool uh, uh, interactions with the art on it as well and how they're printed. So they are hopefully gorgeous there on your screen. I have a hard time seeing what they look like myself, but I'm just holding them up to my camera and wiggling them. So they have a really nice shine on that hollow foil treatment on them. Uh, now, what's real fun for this one, uh, uh, we're revealing a lot of the stuff for the first time for Dark Knight's Metal today too. And we're going to see some live reactions on Robert here. That's kind of why I invited him. He had a really fun time showing off DC deck building. I'm really happy he could too. But these live reactions are much fun. So Dark Knight's Metal. Dark Knight's Metal is coming out later this year. I promise it's coming out later this year. And here are some of the things that are coming up on it. So uh, the biggest one, the, the Batman Who Laughs. Uh, Nathaniel, can you tell me a little bit about the Batman Who Laughs? Okay, sure. So he's probably the most well-known popular character that came out of this about this story arc and uh so the the main idea here is rather than him just being a super villain that kind of shows up and you knock him down and whatever he actually will be around the entire game so uh this is kind of a new concept for dark knight's metal in that you're going to have a tile in fact even just just so he stands up more he's not even a card he's a tile that again has an ongoing effect that will uh do bad things to the players. As you can see here, every time you defeat another another supervillain, you end up getting two weakness cards. You do get to rec uh, rescue another character, which is another mechanic in, in the metal, but you're going to get weakness cards, which are even worse in metal than they, than they are in um, other DC sets, because not only do they decrease your point value, but if you play too many of them in a turn, you can end up losing one of your uh, characters you're playing as. Exactly. So uh, I'll go ahead and pull up that... Uh weakness card so we can see that as well because the weakness cards are basically like a bust mechanic that really can throw you under the bus yeah uh so if you have that second one in your hand while you start your turn you're gonna lose your turn pretty much and right. but luckily it's self-cleaning if you look at how it kind of goes one of them is going to stay with you and keep you at a negative point uh but uh they do uh continue to be there uh and continue to rotate there's actually 30 inside the game instead of the typical 20 because you can get a lot of them in your deck. Um, yeah. So this is uh, one thing I want to say about this is, is super fun for design wise is that this kind of adds a little bit of a push your luck element to the game. Cause if you've got a weakness in your hand already and you're like, I could play this draw two cards, but I know there's another weakness in my deck. So I might just lose my turn if I do this. So there's, there, there's that push your luck element in there. And uh, also as far as design goes, one of the, the, the tricky element is always trying to do something new. And so, for example, in deck building, it just any, or any card game in general, card advantage is always the awesome thing. Like, the more cards you can draw on your turn, the better your turn is going to be. Or, well, this card flips it, flips it on, 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 the, on your head there, and it's like, oh, well, maybe drawing six cards in one turn isn't great because I might draw two weakness cards and then just end my turn and not get to actually buy anything. So it, it adds definitely different design or different um, decision points uh, during the game. Yeah, it's very interesting yeah. how you attack the common philosophy that if you draw more cards, you'll win. Right. Exactly. So uh, with that said, uh, the biggest cards that you're going to see in this set are obviously those metal cards. So I'll go ahead and show some of them right here. Here's Promethean, which is the two cost. Pretty, pretty standard there. But as you start going higher up in these costs, you start seeing some more and more stuff. And what's uh, a cool way to see how this looks is basically – if you see this, this is how our print files look. Uh, everything that is white on this page is what is considered our white safe area and where it will not be shiny. Everything that is white on this page is where it's going to be reflective. So those areas are going to overlap on these cards, and that's where you're seeing these, these cool effects coming on. Um, all right, so Dionysium, 
Oh, I went way too fast. Whoa. <laughs> uh, Dionysium and Batmanium. And you're seeing the, the cards that are part of the main set. So these are also equipment cards, and they fill that same slot of – there's normally a couple uh, twos. There's uh, only one five inside most sets, so in that sort of area too. But inside of Dark Knight's Metal, we also have a cost eight, a cost nine, and a cost ten um, equipment. Nathaniel, that's a pretty high cost for the main set. Main yeah, deck. that's uh... – the first time I think we've done a, a done a ten cost. I know we've done nine. Yeah. I think it's the first time we've done a ten. So yeah, they get they, and get they expensive. really they line into the names of the medals inside the the story as well, which actually is a fun thematic piece as well. Right. So it's the um, eighth the eighth medal, ninth medal, or nth medal and tenth medal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so here's oh, fun. Yeah. So the nth medal, and as you can see with these, there's a lot of power. These are basic in a way they're, they're just as strong as we would have with the uh, super villain that shows up inside the stack but because the stack isn't actually being put into your deck as you buy them there are just points off to the side with an immediate effect in this game uh it allows you to have some of those huge cost cards inside the game without the super villains invading your deck so to speak and then last but not least is element x inside there so this is the most expensive main deck card we've released yet uh, and it is crazy because it actually does give you 10 BP, which does some crazy stuff with some other um, other sets. I, I think I see Robert's mind going <laughs> this whole time right now. He's like, all right, what do I do? What do I do? Okay. Is that what I, I okay. notice it doesn't say 10 asterisks like uh, some of the other cards have in old sets. Correct. What, one of the sub themes of this set is the VP value of cards. And so there are a couple of cards that like give you VP based off of the, or give you power, excuse me, based off the VP of the card. So there are a, a few cards in here that have really big VP numbers to, to help combo with those. Mm -hmm. I will are, say are some though, of those, what are some of those cards names so I can pull them up for you so you can kind of see um, those? Well, Batmanium was one of them. The multiverse uh, map is also the other one. Uh, one. One thing I will say about the Element X, though, is if you can get it to be worth 10 VPs at the end of the game, that's that that's that's achievement unlocked. Because I have, in playtesting, never seen it worth 10 because it... Well, let me rephrase that. Uh, I've never seen anyone play it without any weaknesses in their deck. So because of the fact that you get... Uh, it reduces the cost based off weaknesses. I've never seen it actually be worth 10. So that's like super achievement lock if you can finish the game with zero weaknesses and element yeah, S. Yeah, because you're going to get weaknesses. And oh, actually, yeah. some of the superheroes do lean into that as well. So, Batman, uh, you can't be Batman at the beginning of the game. Sorry. Uh, he's, he's captured by uh, the Batman who laughs just like he was in the comics. So, uh, anyone has a chance to earn Batman because of how the Batman Who Laughs works with the idea that when you take a supervillain off the stack, you get to recruit another character to be put in front of you. And the first one is always going to be Batman thematically with that. But going through these a little bit, there's one that's an old one that I have the replacement for, Nathaniel, just so you know. Uh, Superman okay. uh, allows you to get a few more weakness cards out there as well. Uh, again, useful. And why is things like Element X balance down in a weird way too mm -hmm. we're also playing with a lot of if you control two or more and or so a lot of the characters have that relationship there as well so in wonder woman's case uh two or more equipment and or superpowers draw two cards then discard two cards and they all have a unique trigger effect based off of that um here's the flash hal jordan Cyborg has uh, the basically Batman power, but except for metal cards, which is awesome. It totally fits with him. Aquaman. Mr. Terrific, I think, is my favorite card of the set from a standpoint of a superhero. There's a he's lot of stuff you can do turn one with Mr. Terrific. He's super good. Super good. He's, and But you can also completely wreck your deck. Oh, yeah. So if you, yeah, you can, you can throw yourself under the bus pretty quickly. <laughs> Uh, but it's important uh, with that because you can also hopefully get T-Spheres, which I'll try to pull up over here on the other side. Um, Kendra Saunders. Dr. Fate. Plastic Man. That's not the right Plastic Man. Uh, and uh, Deathstroke. Deathstroke is going to be the promo that comes in the box for the first printing promo. So the, only the first copies of the games will have that, and they will have that little 
first printing, I don't know if you can see it on my side here on my little camera, but the first little printing promo, if you see that, that strokes in there. Yeah. Great artwork uh, on that one. Oh yeah. Uh, and then last but not least is actually going to be um, our friend Plastic Man, which I just hid somewhere. Plastic Man. Uh, that is the final Plastic Man uh, text. So which one of those guys looks the most fun to you, uh, Robert? We're waiting to play Plastic Man because that uh, just giving a type is going to combo with everything. And once you can combine it with uh, multiple characters for the cube, I think the players are going to be all over Plastic Man. I think uh, everyone kind of lost their mind when I suggested that one play test night. That was uh, because we, we, added, we added Plastic Man pretty late into the set. I'm like, I want Plastic Man. I want to play Plastic Man. How about he does this? And you guys are like, hmm. here's, uh, here's the T-spheres that I was talking about earlier. If you do not control a weakness, gain a weakness. So there's some <laughs> really interesting play off that as well. So, uh, yeah, uh, you're going to have some time here. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm doing this as uh, not single pages, as two pages. That makes it a little bit easier to read these. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to start going through some of these uh, photos. Uh, do you guys, can you guys see your question and answer area, uh, Nathaniel and Robert? Yeah, yeah sure down. I have it pulled up here. Uh, go ahead and pull that up because I haven't been tracking that as much because I'm running this set over here. If there's sure. any questions that you guys want to answer while we're going on in this, that probably would be does a the plastic, good way to do Okay, it. Uh, so uh, I'm kind of starting at the bottom here. So does the Plastic Man work like the one from Heroes Unite? So uh, no. So the uh, in Heroes Unite, there's a Plastic Man main deck card. Um, this one is a superhero, oversized card. So he's a character you can actually play as. His effect is when you uh, you can choose to have your next card gain a type added onto it. So you can make your your punch uh, an equipment or or a, a superpower or a hero to help combo out with uh, some other other effects. So uh, one of the things. Um, that we kind of try to do on this was because you're going to end up having two or three different superheroes on your set. We tried to make it so that there were a lot of different combos you can have on, between them. That's one of the reasons why the, the hybrid heroes came out where have two equipments or superpowers or, or villains or heroes or whatever. So that when you get multiples of them together, they, they combo off of each other. And so plastic man being actually the last one that got added in because we wanted to have uh, an, another superhero in the deck was like, well, we have all these people that care about types. So how about just, you can pick whatever type you want. There you go. Yep. Uh, and then uh, Rabbit Robin, uh, I think Robert, you've been excited about this one the most. Uh, we showed this one off a little bit ago. And this is the card of the set for uh, a lot of people. This uh, embodies, you know, you just see the weakness on the card. Um, Nathaniel, we did notice one thing. It doesn't mm -hmm. say uh, buy or gain. It just says when you gain. That's, yes. Uh, going away from buying, I guess maybe to, you know, help save ink and whatnot. Sure. So, with this set, we're kind of doing a template shift. Um, so the phrase buy or gain is being phased out just to gain. So essentially, and, and this is like, this is something we're hoping most people don't notice unless you're a seasoned DC player and you know all the rules and such. But we're, we're again, we're kind of phasing out buy or gain and just saying, well, if you buy a card, you gained it in the process of buying it. So gain is just there to meet instead of buy or gain. So yep, if you see cool. a card that says if you gain a card, that just means if you gain it without paying the cost or if you paid the cost, then you get it. We also saw what, maybe not necessarily a new keyword, but the word keep. Um, we haven't been able to keep cards before. Uh, yeah, we're always looking for ways to shorten text. And so um, that's kind of just the way of saying, yeah, it's uh, a very fun leave thing. It in play instead of getting rid of it. So yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. cool, and uh, we haven't had many effects that just play the top card. You know, if you want to, you can do this and keep it. Yeah. Yep. Yep, and it, th that was pretty. That was kind of brought in with a little bit of an allegation as well. I believe there was some some play with that as well. Um, a couple of other quick questions uh, that we have right there. What what sets do you think Dark Metal will combine with best? Well, one the one that it's being developed in conjunction with is Bombshells Nine, which we just announced. It does work pretty well with that. Yeah. But you'll have to wait for more information on that one. Uh, anyone else that you kind of think, Nathaniel? <sighs> um, metal is, is, is so fun on its own. It's, it's hard to choose like one to, to combine with it. I, um, off the top of my head, let's see. Metal, metal, metal. Um, it would probably be super awesome with 
uh, seven new gods. I think it would be a pretty fun one to play it with. Yep. Um, that would probably be my first pick of like cool thing to try with with it would be the new gods crossover pack. Cool. Well, that's awesome. Well, guys, we're getting to two p.m. now, which is uh, quitting time for CryptozoicCon. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and invite Jamie and Amanda back on. Uh, if you guys had any other questions for Dark Knight's Metal or any of our other games or Cerberus games or anything like that, please just ask us on our Facebook page. Uh, we'll answer them there. If anything didn't get answered here, I'm sorry, guys. There's 21 open ones, and that's a lot of stuff, which is awesome. I'm glad you guys are so excited. Um, but go ahead and just copy-paste it over to one of the uh, uh, comment uh, sections over on Facebook, and we'll try to answer it over there and keep this discussion going and uh, keep talking about cool stuff. Probably one thing that probably would be worth you guys knowing is Dark Knight's Metal is printing right now, so it's happening. Uh, when it gets here is a little bit of an up in the air question of just where COVID-19 is, but ships still tend to run. Some warehouses still are working. We are still shipping stuff out of our e-store. So depending on whatever happens with this whole weird pandemic that we're all living through and you're seeing the inside of my house, uh, we'll uh, figure out a way to make sure you have it hopefully this year. I don't see a reason why it wouldn't be in your house this year. So, yeah. right, Thank you, Nathaniel. Thank, Thank you, us. Robert, for coming with us today. Uh, feel free to stick around a little bit or sign off. And Amanda, is there anything else that we want to say at the end of this uh, CryptoZoicCon? Uh, inaugural year. I know. Um, it, it was a really cool event. It was really fun. Thank you, everybody, for um, coming out and participating. Um, thank you, Nathaniel. Um, thank you for making time to all of our great panelists that came to talk and share all of their knowledge about everything. Like. There's just like so much info is like crammed into these past like two, four hours over these past like two days. So it's been really fun. All of our panels will be online on YouTube at the beginning of next week. Um, so if there's anything you missed or something that you wanted to catch later, um, then you can definitely see that on YouTube in next week. So yeah, um, we couldn't have done it without you. Thank you for your patience through technical difficulties and trolls and garbage and things like that. But I feel like we had some really fun times and had some really cool takeaways from all of this fun behind the scenes, excuse me, behind the scenes stuff that we get to do with you guys. So thanks for attending Thank you all. CryptoZoicon 2020.